Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of The Introduction. I am your host, and today I have a very special guest. She's from the UK. She had two fashion lines, one in New York as well as one in Vancouver. And she might be one of the youngest fashion designers out there right now. So without further ado, I'm not going to keep talking about her. I'll let her talk about herself. <laughs> Hi, so, I'm Emma Emmons. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Imogen Emmons. I'm a Scottish fashion designer and the founder of Innie Studios. Okay, okay. So so what? what is, tell us, like, what is your studios? What is, what exactly, or better yet, what's, what's that on your head? <laughs> so uh, this is one of the hats from our recent collection. Um, we are now doing them in five colors because okay. they've been super popular. Um, this is this is the first one we did, and this is still my favorite. It's got like a special place in my heart. Um, so yeah. So okay, right? I see that. I see that. I want to say you seem like you have a very unique style. Mm -hmm. Um. So you have a green hat on. Yeah. That style is that translate to your? Does that translate to your everyday clothing that you wear? Like, how does being a fashion designer affect what you wear? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really interesting because my style and my design style used to be so different. And my personal style has definitely gone through like so many different phases. Um, I, I had a year where I literally only wore pink for like one year. Um, and I had pink hair and I would literally exclusively wear pink. Like it was insane. Um, and so, and like, I wouldn't wear black, like, I, I was like, oh my God, I will never wear black in my life. Now you'll catch me in black all the time. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely changed up, but no, my design styles stayed fairly the same. Okay. And my personal style has kind of like caught up with my design style. Um, so I like, I like kind of, I like a lot of baggy clothes, deconstructed silhouettes. Um, I like jewelry, like as you can see, I've got all like my rings on. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so it, it definitely has changed up. I think now I'm like, I've definitely found my style more. Okay. So, um, you know, as you grow, as you got older, you know, growing into that, did your, did your fashion really shape your, the way that you wanted to make your brand, the way that you dressed when you were younger, did that shape how you saw your brand going up? Not really. Like it's, I think actually a lot of the art I produced um, like during school, I loved art. I think that has shaped my brand more than like commercial clothes that I wear. Okay. It's definitely like my design style has been shaped by kind of like my conceptual thoughts and stuff like that, rather than obviously there's like, I have influences from like other designers, stuff like that. But yeah, I think it's, it's, it's developed from like an artistic place. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so you know coming from an artistic place is there anything that inspires you that isn't art let's say it's not fashion let's say it's not what is there anything such as politics you know because politics right now is major we have BLM um we have a bunch of bunch of different things going on today mm -hmm. you know one example could be sexual misconduct or the misogyny seen from men to women as well as the things that females wear, for example, from being a guy's perspective, it's like, okay, they wear this, they're, they're exactly this type of person. Mm -hmm. Being a fashion designer, how do you deal with that misconception of, you know, they have to wear a certain type of thing to not appear to be, to be prom promiscuous? Uh -huh. Well, I think it's something you kind of touched on there is really interesting is that like your fashion is an expression as is like your gender is an expression do you know what I mean things like that and people don't realize how much issues like politics and fashion they all intertwine like everything is linked like there are clothes that are deemed to be like for men and clothes that are deemed to be for women and stuff like that and that's all political um so I definitely find the overlaps so interesting yeah. And um, obviously you spoke about um, like sexual misconduct. Um, I did a collection, my New York Fashion Week collection um, was inspired by sexual assault survivors and their stories. Mm -hmm. um, and I basically, I thought of the idea when I 
just got catcalled before getting on the tube and I got catcalled by this group of guys and it made me feel super uncomfortable I felt like I was gonna cry and I got on the tube and I just started writing in my notes like how could I kind of create a safe space where women could talk about this kind of stuff and yeah. have their voices actually be heard you know like I had this platform at New York Fashion Week something that I've never really had before and I wanted to kind of use that to project other people's stories and um, obviously it's a really hard issue to speak about because sexual assault isn't fashion like it's not but so I wanted to do it in a way where I was essentially passing the mic on to other women and allowing them to tell their stories without being challenged or interrupted and basically just allowing them to be heard. Um, so I basically just crowdsourced stories through Instagram and, and the response was like insane. Like I didn't have many followers and there were people emailing me, meshing me, phoning me about their experiences with sexual assault. Some people would send me like three pages of typed out like descriptions. Some people would just send a small paragraph. It was like completely in their court. You can share as much or as little as you want. You can share it anonymously. It was just, uh, yeah, an amazing experience, but like super, super moving. Um, and yeah, and nice to kind of have like other women I don't know to confide in uh, because I, sometimes it's harder to speak to somebody you know than somebody you don't. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, you, you just hit on major, a couple major things. And one of those things is I'm actually going to ask you about your fashion, right? You're, you're inspired by these different things. You're inspired by things going on in today's society. So what inspired your reconstruct my flesh line? Mm -hmm. that, that was one you did in Vancouver, you know? And another thing is actually before, before you get into that, you, you mentioned in an article that you're frustrated and you get angered and you get triggered by these things that go overlooked they go unnoticed and people just it's like an everyday thing yeah so what is that like how does that translate you know mm -hmm. yeah definitely at the start when I was like starting out in fashion the my collections would usually be inspired by issues that kind of made me feel like angry um and it was kind of my way of projecting that anger into like something creative uh, okay. like directing it into something creative um but no so my reconstruct my flesh collection uh, that was like the first collection i ever uh designed or produced and um, that was inspired by kind of society's like obsession with like self-modification yeah um it's such an interesting issue because especially like among women like plastic surgery is like like quite common quite popular yeah and i would never like judge or fault or you know anybody for doing that because as a society we make people feel insecure about certain things so you know reacting to that and modifying your body is like a completely like fair thing to do you know like it's everyone's got a right to their own choice kind of thing yeah. but it does just interest me because I kind of started thinking in my head you know, imagine in like a hundred years, do you think we'd be able to like take it to the next level? Like obviously right now you can get like the craziest plastic surgery. Yeah. I was thinking like this kind of random, like funny thought. Imagine if you could like have an extra leg, like, <laughs> you know, I mean, just things like that. And I just started thinking and it kind of sparked this idea. Um, and I basically just started doing technical drawings of a bunch of like generic clothing, like dress shirts like trousers like all these kind of things and then right. I cut them all up and I would just mix them and see like what I came out with and yeah that's probably like my favorite runway collection I did um just because I had so much time to design it and um, right. for my New York collection I only had a month to design and make everything oh. so it was and I was like making it all myself so like it was definitely I, although I had a strong concept, the designs weren't as like intricately like thought out. Um, okay. So that's why my Vancouver collection, like I, and also it's my first collection. So I've definitely got this kind of like, you know, affiliation with it. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, probably one of my favorite collections I've done. Okay. So 
you also you say some you just said that you you worked on your New York line by yourself do you do everything yourself yeah so um right now I'm literally doing everything myself um I design I make the patterns I grade the patterns and um, okay. I make each piece myself I do like the sourcing social media website literally everything it's a lot and um, I've had a few 17 hour days this week Whoa. Um, yeah Whoa. But, <laughs> yeah but I mean I know that like I'm kind of at the beginning of like my like my business my brand and I know if I like put loads and loads of work in at the beginning eventually it will get easier like I can hire yeah. people I'll outsource like I know I will I will end up doing that but um yeah right now it's a lot but I mean that's just kind of what happens when you start your own business like yeah. it's, it's your life do you know what I mean so you, yeah it's your it's really your life it's, it is, it's yeah. your baby at the time like you're building this up yeah and I feel like it's so glorified like the way people talk about like oh my god like you should start your own business like it like um what's the saying do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life could yeah. not be less true like literally like <laughs> do what you love and you'll be working your arse off kind of thing um so yeah it's intense but I mean like I I want to do this I want to pursue this and like you've got to go it's kind of all or nothing like you've got to go all the way so so let me you know if you didn't have that push if you didn't have that drive do you think you would be doing this do you think that you would actually be as happy as you are right now hmm. I think I would still be doing something creative but I don't yeah. think I would be like I don't think I'd have my own brand like a lot of it is I'm like quite an obsessive person and I I do love working when I'm not working I'm I feel kind of weird which I know is like not really the best thing like I should be able to you know have like my downtime stuff like yeah. that it isn't about work I'm also like I'm very like anti-consumerist anti-capitalist all that so it's this kind of weird <laughs> like thing in my head of I don't know I feel better when I work even though I know I shouldn't um but yeah I'm definitely I'm definitely like a determined person and I've got a lot of drive but I think there is it is so so important to relax like if you're watching this like don't think you should I don't know like be doing that <laughs> especially during this time like there's a pandemic going on and I feel like we're expected to work as if we're not in a pandemic yeah um so yeah I mean everyone needs to kind of take it easy right now definitely so you mentioned also you mentioned about being in the pandemic how big has this pandemic really affected you and your brand so I so I was living in London before the pandemic in like a okay. tiny flat with no windows um <laughs> which was great um, and I actually I moved back home to Scotland um in with my family which okay. in itself is like such a privilege like I recognize the fact that like a lot of people don't have that and um, so without that privilege you know I probably wouldn't have been able to start selling online because I wouldn't have the space to work in and um, so that's definitely like you know it's it's one of those things that's like it's a privilege kind of thing so I'm like really really thankful for that that I've got like I've got a room I've got space and um, but also I think if it weren't for the pandemic I probably wouldn't have started selling online because I wouldn't have had time to um like start properly thinking about how I'm going to take my brand to the a commercial level okay. um because I was doing I was working in London I was working for another designer um, and I probably would have kept doing that so okay. it's kind of been like a blessing and a curse but I've definitely kind of redirected my focus because of the pandemic so I mean that's a positive but obviously there are like many negatives about it so you saw the you saw the pandemic as like a blessing in disguise really I mean obviously on the whole not at all like <laughs> <laughs> not a blessing at all but I mean it's it's just allowed me to refocus and I think a lot of people have kind of had that like a lot of people have realized they want to move out the city and they've realized like what's important in life um so I think I'm definitely like in that camp but obviously like it's not at all been like a blessing on the whole but yeah, yeah there's there's aspects of it that have kind of changed my way of thinking and changed my goals and stuff like that okay okay so 
before we wrap up, I just want to ask you one more question. That photo you have right there with the, the drawings. This one? Yeah. What, yeah. what exactly is that? So when I was 15, um, I did like a summer course. And basically we did this task where someone had to, um, there was a massive pile of clothes in the middle and okay. somebody had to like put on a bunch of them and everyone had one minute to sketch what they were wearing. Um, so these are like three of my one minute sketches. Um, they're definitely not like my best drawings ever, but I mean, they kind of go in my room and I've done all this in like the same kind of colors to match. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean. So, you know, I, those photos, right? That paint, that picture that you did. Yeah. You, you do that on a continuous basis with all your, you know, all your designs. Um, so I do drawings for like each design. Um, but because I'm the only person who sees them, they don't really have to be that like technical or good right now. I know oh. that like when I when I outsource, I'm gonna have to spend more time on designing, which is actually kind of my favorite thing to do. So I'm excited for that. But yeah, right now, because it's just me, I mean, I'm the only one who's gonna see <laughs> um the drawings, so they can be like really rough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, as we as we prepare to close out, is there anything that you want to say to the viewers? Anything you want to leave with them? Also, what's your website? Um. So yeah, <laughs> check out my website, guys. It's um imistudios.co.uk. Um, you'll find. Write yeah, write that down. <laughs> um, you'll find my two recent collections on there that are for sale. You'll find this hat on there. So if you want check to call in five colors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah no just everybody please like stay safe and well and yeah I'm, like my thoughts are going out to everybody and thank you for listening yeah well and everyone, for <laughs> thank you for being on the show and everyone you know check in next week for an, another interview all righty have a good one